Hello everyone. Welcome back to the Q&A series. Today's question is about dealing with intense emotions. So the question was specifically regarding uh, longing. Someone whose fiancé, who they loved very much, was away for an extended period of time and they found it interrupted their meditation practice. There were intense states of longing that prevented them from having a peaceful meditation session. And so the question is what to do? What to, what to do about this? So I think first and foremost we have to be clear about uh, how we look at peace from a meditative perspective. How, do, how does peace relate to mindfulness practice? Peace is the goal of mindfulness, insight, meditation practice, it's the goal of Buddhism. But how peaceful our meditation practice is going to be is going to depend very much upon our, our, our habits and the qualities of the states of mind that make up our habits. Mindfulness is about focusing on our objective reality. It's about confronting that reality. We saya bimukha. That's the Pali of facing, confronting. Confronting reality, basically. So if your reality is one of longing, then that's the reality that you're going to face. Expecting your meditation to be peaceful is incorrect, is improper, unreasonable. Because meditation, mindfulness meditation isn't about creating specific pleasant states. It's about dealing with the states that exist in your mind and learning about them and understanding them. So that, that that's first, is not to not to consider that your practice is bad. Because in fact, the description that you're giving of your practice is something that's praiseworthy. From the sounds of it, you're practicing quite well. What you're seeing is that the result of longing is stressful. And what you're also seeing, or are able to see from this, over time especially, is that the attachment you have for this person is leading to the longing, which is leading to stress and uh, unpleasantness. It's a fact, it's, a, it's an aspect of clinging. And the Buddha didn't, um, didn't just make all up, all, all up that stuff about craving being the cause of suffering. The, the the pleasant uh, the, the, the pleasant sensations that we strive for that we crave for lead to addiction and dissatisfaction when we don't get what we want when we are hi sampa yogo being associated with what is not pleasant hi vipa yogo being uh, separated from what is dear to us. This is suffering, this is stress. But uh, important to note as well is that mindfulness is not about denying or, or rejecting the desire, the, the attachment, the, the what you would say, the love for this person. 
It's for facing it and observing it, which is what you're doing. And the practice that you're doing from the sounds of it, if continued, if you're patient, and if you can face those emotions, uh, is going to lead to more contentment, more peace, less attachment, less stress, and less suffering. And this can be generalized to any sort of extreme state like this. You don't have to reject. First of all, don't reject the stress and, and, and the suffering that comes from these states that appears in meditation. Oh, my meditation is bad because I'm stressed and, and disquieted during the practice. I'm no good at this meditation. I can't, I'm doing something wrong. Um, there's one, one of my videos, I think, um, it was um, quite complete in, in describing, I think it's called the experience of reality. And I definitely recommend that video because it, it, it summed up pretty much everything I wanted to say about um, this sort of idea that we have bad practice because it's unpleasant, it's, un uh, it's unpredictable, because it's uncontrollable, and so why that's actually a good sign. It's a sign of learning something about cause and effect, the nature of reality, and so on. Um, but also don't reject or, or uh, fight against the negative, the, against the causes of the negative experiences. So desire, aversion, trying to reject our attachment and reject our love for other people and so on. It's not necessary. It's not really all that helpful. We're best served by studying and, and observing. Then you don't have to believe me that I say, oh, well, this has to do with your intense attachment to this person and you'd be better off getting rid of it. Naturally, as you observe, you become less attached to people. You become less dependent on them and thus less susceptible to the suffering that comes from change. The suffering that comes not from change, but from our inability to uh, bear with and to deal with and to live with change, impermanence. That's about the, the core of it in regards to intense states. Sometimes they can get so intense that it's very difficult to, to, to practice. It's easy to say, well, just try and bear with them. That's the theory. There are many ways that you can uh, reduce extreme states, but you know, a lot of them have to do with not having a fiancé, for example, living in the forest, being celibate, eating one meal a day. Um, I mean, one great thing that works, even for people who have uh, partners and children and, and material lives, worldly lives is to do a meditation course you know find some time to either do a course uh, intensively or do some sort of you know we do courses where people meet once a week it's far less effective and less profound is the change if you do a, a, a sort of a one hour a day meditation course but uh, I'd say it's still helpful you know undergo some training and uh, the guidance from the teacher, sort of the psychological support that comes from knowing that you've got someone in your corner who's guiding you, and in fact the guidance that they give, if they're qualified to give it, can be quite helpful in terms of uh, helping you to deal with the more extreme states especially. So there you go. There's an answer to that question. Thank you all for tuning in. Have a good day.